Sing Momo Connors. How's everybody doing? We're so happy that you all came out tonight. We're even happier that you came out every Saturday night. And as a thank you to just you guys, we're giving away a few little goodies. And we're gonna make a few announcements. Now say hello to your Toonami Momocon panel. Hello. You guys have you guys having fun? Are you guys excited? Did you guys get to see your shirts and your raffle tickets? Did you get some of those? Well, my name is Jack Bond and I'm your uh, host tonight. I am the one of importance, but these guys are very important. And if we can go down to the table and have you guys introduce yourself, tell your roles, tell a little bit about yourself, and just basically, you know, let these people know why you rock. I am Jason DeMarco. I'm the co-creator of Toonami, and I run Toonami with that guy. We're all the people who don't get a son. <laughs> we are all Jason DeMarco. It's a high Jason mind. DeMarco. Uh, I'm Gil Austin. I uh, write and produce Tsunami. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm John Lee Ray. I'm an editor at Tsunami. Hello. My name is Dana Swanson. I do a voice on Tsunami. I do the voice of Sarah. She's pretty cool. Uh, occasionally I write stuff. So there's that. And I am human Sarah, and I'm an editor. <laughs> so. Let's, uh, we'll start off, we've got some people who couldn't make it, because Konami is a national success, but we're only in Georgia right now. So we had some questions online that we could uh, give those people a chance. To start off, Inuyasha-san87 on Twitter asks, do you think Sarah could get a full body in the future? I'm assuming AI Sarah, not. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, real Sarah has a body, and, and Dana has a body as well. Uh, I, I think it's possible for Sarah to have a body. We like her head, though. Uh, body is possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but bodies cost a lot of money. Um, so there's that. That's true. So, Frank Savoca Jr. on Twitter asks, uh, particularly for Jason, can we hear the great Lich King's Lich Laugh? <laughs> uh, I, I, I always picture it like Vincent Price from Thriller. That's what I picture. Ah, 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 ah. That's what I picture in my head. So yeah. I'm a little intimidated. No, it's okay. My time will come. Uh, Roman asks, uh, Dear Toonami team, my question is, how do you feel about the success of Attack on Titan and what do you expect from it in the future? I will throw that to the Toonami team. Uh, we love all success, and we are very excited for Attack on Titan. Hang on one second, this is Steve Bloom calling Oh, uh, Steve Bloom is calling in. <laughs> Hello, Steve Bloom, how are you? Hang on one second. Is this gonna make this microphone split? All right, you're on speaker now. Johnny, you cut the promos. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. That show's great. Um, 
Yeah, I cut the promos for that launch and stuff, and uh, I was really psyched to see all the costumes here for Attack on Titan. Like that, you always get, uh, you know a show's doing well when you walk around and you see a lot of people dressed like it, so that's always the first uh, inkling that that's a good show. Um, but no, nah, the show's awesome. I'm, I'm pumped. Yeah, special shout out to that guy that had like the slim, good body Titan outfit. Like that, that's pretty choice. So <laughs> give yourself a hand wherever you are in your suit. <laughs> You're a braver man than I. So we had a, an honest, u anonymous user on a Tumblr ask, how's the comic going along? <laughs> slowly. <Yeah. laughs> Very slowly. We, we have been working on the comic, but it's changed twice. We lost funding once. We regained funding. Uh, and now the comic will be tied to Intruder 2. So that means we kind of had to reconfigure it. But uh, there will still be a comic, I promise. It's just going to be next year. Um, but it's coming along really well. I can't tell you anything more than that. <laughs> and uh, as you all know, tonight there's a special presentation on Konami. How excited are you guys for Cooler's Revenge? Uh, we're super excited. We, uh, we love DBC, obviously, and are uh, sad that we don't currently have DBC, but tonight we do. Where it belongs. I would just like to make a public service announcement about Cooler's Revenge. If you've never seen Dragon Ball, just know that it's, it's not um, about pound puppies cooler. Just putting that out there for you. Well, that was it for our internet question. So if we all want to line up very calmly, quick, or not quickly, but very calmly for audience questions, let's uh, open the floor. Calmly, calmly. Wow, look how many of the people are. Hi, hello. Very happy to see all of you. I hope we get some good questions. He's waving. Are you okay? There's their shirts in the back. Calmly. Calmly. There's plenty of answers. Shirts in the back. They don't cost anything. You ready? Is the mic working? Okay. Hello, testing. Hello. Three. I think we have a broken question mic. Do we? Hello. Hello. Might just be me. Test. Test. Now I can hear him. Oh. Testing. Oh, that's loud. Know. Hello. Hey, hi. How's everybody, How's everybody doing? There we go. So I guess we'll start. Start? Away. All right. Uh, my main question, by the way. Hi. I'm Corey. Um, hi, Dana. Uh, <laughs> I want to know how you guys chose Dana to be the voice for Sarah. Oh, well, she's I awesome. <laughs> well, I know that. I know that personally already, so, I mean... Uh, it was actually Gil's idea, so maybe Gil wants to talk about it. Talk about it. So, yeah, we uh, obviously needed a new voice because the voice of Sarah that we had before, we weren't able to use anymore. And uh, Dana's been doing VO stuff for years, and it's great, and it's right next door. So those two things collided to make the amazing new Sarah voice. Sarah, do your voice, Sarah. I mean, uh, Dana, do your Sarah voice. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, Momocon? Is this breathy enough for you? Because sometimes I, sometimes I forget to make good breath here. There's also no reverb right now, so sorry. Dana's normal voice is much less breathy than her Sarah voice, so pretty much our constant direction is always more breathy, more breathy, more breathy, more breathy. She probably hears it in her sleep at this point. <laughs> right. um, so yeah, that's how we picked her. She was right next door. And great. Thank you. Because I was next door too. <laughs> sure. Sure. Hey, uh, what's up? My name is Aaron, longtime fan. I have two questions for you, if that's okay. Sure. Um, the first one is, how do you guys feel knowing that you have the majority of America's 
childhood in your hands. <laughs> what kind of feeling of empowerment do you get from that? Um, you know, I, to be honest, it wasn't something we thought about that much because we do it every day and it's, 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 what, you know, it's our work. Um, and we didn't really, we don't go around thinking like, oh man, we're changing lives. You know, <laughs> our brains work. Um, but honestly, it was when, you know, after we came back from being away and seeing how excited everybody was and seeing guys like you come out to see us talk, uh, it sort of made us aware, wow, you know, we, I guess we made an impact on some people's lives, which is why we, we do what we do. Um, I can only speak for myself. I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and we were on originally, I mean, obviously we could see the ratings, but there just wasn't an immediate fan feedback, so we just didn't have that. So coming back, especially April Fools, and just seeing the reaction of people, YouTube videos of, holy shit, for 500 times in a row, was pretty <laughs> And uh, we're just constantly blown away and humbled and happy and amazed with, uh, that everyone still likes it. Yeah. Yeah, well, next door. Yeah, somebody, somebody <laughs> next door is excited about it. And then um, for the second question, how do you guys feel about um, subsidiary websites such as Toonami Aftermath? I mean, I still watch them in addition to regular Toonami. All we can really say about sites like that is they're not anything to do with Cartoon Network or Adult Swim, and we can't say anything more than that. Uh, you don't like them? <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's up, guys? How are you? First off, I'd like to say thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> because you guys, honestly, I got, I have a question, and I actually have something here for you. Um, okay. Further question, for the editors, you guys actually inspired me to make AMVs, which turned into me making YouTube videos, which turned into me making, wanting to make movies. So how long does the uh, editing process take for a, uh, a, a promo? General problem. I will throw to our editors <laughs> to talk about that. It depends. Um, I know last year, when we were about to air Evangelion, we weren't going to make a promo for it. And then that went from no promo to no, actually, we did a promo in three days and turned out around and awesome. So, some days as short as two to three days. Um, the music videos can take a week, ten days, just kind of off and on. Or even longer than the last one. I mean, yeah. the one that kind of took you three weeks to a month. Oh. I would say yeah. <laughs> and uh, for this, oh, I'd also like to tell you, you've inspired, uh, I'm part of a group called SD Prime on Facebook, Bandcamp, all that stuff, and uh, I had somebody make a poster for you guys, and I got a CD with our Toonami tribute song on there, so I'm going to give that to you, that's all right. So I wanted to know, why did Toonami go off in the first place? Was it because I think you said something when you were fan ratings? Or was sure. Like um, I mean, you know, there's a lot of reasons it went off that I can talk about. But what I can talk about is um, any TV show or any television block is kind of like a restaurant or a nightclub. It's not something that people expect to last forever. It, it, it comes with a, I mean, unless it's The Simpsons or Law and Order, <laughs> which will be. Those shows will be going after we're all dead in bones. There'll be new suits and law and orders. But most shows are not designed or expected to last beyond a couple years, and that included Toonami. Toonami went far beyond. 11 years is a good run. Um, so there were just a number of factors beyond ratings. Uh, ratings were a part of it. Um, you know, less promotional time, a different network, a different direction for the network in general. But really, it was just a cyclical thing. It was like a bunch of different factors came together, and it was just time, as far as the network was concerned. I mean, obviously, we were not, uh, we didn't agree with that decision, but we worked there, you know? Um, so it was like, it, 
with a bunch of internal reasons and a bunch of external reasons. Um, and what brought it back was the same thing. It was a, a, it was a, a number of internal reasons that made it sort of an opportunity we could take and a number of external reasons, which is you guys all letting you know, Adult Swim in particular know you wanted it back. Um, and so that's kind of how it goes in TV though. Um, so yeah, I wish I could give you an extremely direct answer, but I work there, so. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I like my job. My name's uh, Tribors of Shadows. Um, you got me into uh, video editing and uh, motion graphics and 3D and stuff, and I'm actually about to like start taking it pro, so I'm, I'm very grateful for that. That's awesome. Um, I also, I got two questions too, but they're really small. Um, one is, do you ever think about going to another convention? Because, like, you seem to only go to this one. I was wondering if you come to any other ones in Atlanta that y'all are already here. Oh, would we ever do another convention? Yeah, I mean, honestly, we don't, we don't get asked that much. We get asked by people who want us to go to conventions, but we don't um, have a huge marketing budget, so we, we aren't, like, approaching anime that, expo. that goes with my second question. Um, is there any way you could, you could have funding from our SS fans, like as like maybe like donations or doing like T-shirts for funding or something? Right, right, <laughs> right now they won't let us accept funding, not not yet. And um, last question is, um, would you think of, of uh, coming to a con if somebody made it a tsunami con? If somebody made it a tsunami con, we could totally go to that. I'm thinking of making a tsunami con, so. Yeah. If there is a tsunami con, we would definitely want to go to that. Yeah. If you build it, they will come. Yeah. If you build it, we will come. Well, let's keep a lookout. To your con. Especially if it's in Atlanta. <laughs> Especially if we're in Atlanta somewhere. <laughs> Alright, hi. Uh, my first question is as stated before, the Revenge of Cooler movie is coming to Tsunami tonight. And uh, does that really mean anything towards Dragon Ball Z ever being on Tsunami? That's a very good question, and I think that's a very good segue for me to announce that we're going to be showing DBZ Kai. <laughs> Not tonight, in the fall. In the fall. Right. So, this fall, we have finally gotten our hands on Kai that we wanted since day one. So, so you are correct. It did mean something. All right. I'll just ask because you just said it. Is there any chance of the Boo Saga ever added, added to the uh, Kai? Because it's in Japan right now, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I think what we're going to do is what we always do, which is see how Kai does. Because, you know, that's, it's all about ratings. We are very interested in the Boo Saga, of course. Um, so that's going to depend on how many of you guys watch Kai on Toonami. Okay. And, uh, my other question is, uh, is there any chance you could ever show Redline the movie? Because that movie is incredible. Uh, we love Redline. Um, and it's definitely something that I would like to show. You know, I mean, we um, showing movies is trickier for us because it's paying for one run, one time, as opposed to and that's money we could be using to sh acquire a show. Um, so it's tricky. Um, but obviously, if the right situation presented itself, aka cheap, then we would. <laughs> We would definitely, I love Redline. I would totally love to show that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Oh, that's really loud. <laughs> um, my question is, I guess, kind of to continue. How do you go about acquiring the anime that you do show? And having said that, can I expect Cyborg 009 in any foreseeable future? Uh, I'll answer the last one first. I don't think you can expect Cyborg 009 oh. in any future. <laughs> I would not write it off, but it's not one that's like on our hot list. Um, how we pick shows, you know, we get asked this a lot. I'm gonna have Gil answer part of this, but uh, it's actually just Gil and I and Kim Manning at Adult Swim, and we basically look at the money we have available. That's the number one thing. How much money we got? <laughs> um, then it's uh, what are we excited about, you know, and that is what are you guys talking about? What are the websites talking about? Um, and then what do our partners have that they want us to show? Because our partners that we work with will say, hey, we got the show. We'd really love for you to show it, depending on what it is. And sort of if all of those factors together, and then we also look at what are we showing now? What do we have that's like that show? What do we have that's different? Does it feel like Toonami? You know, am I missing anything? Yeah, no, it's part sort of math equation of money versus availability versus um, how 
fast we need to turn it around or how much time we have, what's the immediate need, did we forget we were losing the rights to a show this weekend? <laughs> I absolutely can say for sure that people have told me about shows, you know, people online, and we have definitely looked into those shows because of people talking about them. So that matters when you guys send stuff to our Tumblr, when you bug me on, on Twitter, you know, any, any way you can get us the shows you want to see, we definitely take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, first, I want to say um, the fall down seven times, uh, get up eight video was really inspiring. It helped me to really never give up, so I appreciate that. Uh, my actual question is, I know it's an older show, but I'm a huge uh, Lupin the Third fan. Is there any chance you would have... Yeah! <laughs> is there any chance you would show any of that content in the future? I mean, I'm a huge Lupin the Third fan, too. Um, so I would not rule it out. Um, it, it depends on everything we already talked about. But uh, I will say, yeah, I love Lupin. I always have. All right, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. I love that piece, too. <laughs> Fall down seven times, stand with me. Hello. Um, I just want to say that you have done like masterful pro like promos, like both in the past and and in the present. I would have to. My question is like, do you have like a particular favorite promo you've done? Ooh, I like this question. Uh, well, I'll start. Uh, this year, just this year, my favorite promo we did was Akira. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we did that movie justice because that movie was a massive seminal movie for me and particularly my generation of oldster anime watchers. Um, what about you guys? Um, yeah, this year... Just your favorite if you can't remember this year. I like the Blood Dragon review. A lot. That was a fun one to make. I'm not really testing, staying the test of time, but that was just personally a fun one to make. Stand on, uh, Fallout sometimes, Stand Up Apis, uh, I really liked. Um, uh, this year, one I thought that I liked the best, I guess, was a Space Sandy trailer. Yeah. Just because I got to use one of my favorite bands, the Misfits, for a song in there. That was, uh, yeah. that was exciting, just to use one of my favorite bands in a promo. And we got to sing the boobs. We got to sing the boobs, um, boobs like five times. <laughs> but uh, that was a fun one. Um, my favorite that I have watched is uh, Fall Down Seven Times. How do do? I was just wondering two quick quick questions. One, do y'all plan on getting uh, uh, the new Sailor Moon series when that comes out? <laughs> uh, uh, I we're not we we can't say obviously, but we're interested in it. We're definitely it's definitely something we're looking at, and I will say that you guys made your excitement about it very clear. Yeah. It was about a solid week of every 10 seconds somebody sending a message to the Tom of Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon. So, I got it. I also love Sailor Moon, and I'll be buying that box set myself. So, just know we're Sailor Moon fans. We've heard you guys. So, it's definitely on our radar. But no announcement at the moment. Okay, and the second quick question. I noticed that... 
Comedy Central is able to air uncut, censor-free things. But since uh, since your new shows came out, it seems like there's a leap in every other word. Mm -hmm. Why can't y'all uh, get away with that? Well, Adult Swim shares channel space with Cartoon Network during the day, obviously. Um, and I know that a regular Adult Swim watcher probably doesn't even think about that. Um, but the fact is, advertisers do, uh, and Nielsen does. And the number of people that are of a certain age that are watching at any hour uh, might be lower than you would think. So uh, our standards and practice department have a pretty, I mean, we've gotten better, but they have a pretty, they're pretty uptight about certain words. Um, and I would even argue, I know that Comedy Central for sure pushes the envelope more than almost anyone else uh, in that regard. And where Adult Swim ever to become a 24-hour channel or something like that, I, I, think, <laughs> yeah, I think if that were ever to happen, we would be able to be a lot more loose with our standards. Um, but ultimately, and again, we don't make that decision, the network does, uh, they just have a certain level they're comfortable with. So you're just not going to see a lot of nudity. You're not going to see a lot of F-words or N-words or certain words. They're just not going to, you know, it's not something we're going to be able to do for the foreseeable future. Okay. Um, but other than that, I think it's more yeah, like, is way more... I mean, Black Lagoon highlights it quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we took the chance with Black Lagoon that we would rather just show the show because it's so awesome, knowing that we'd have to bleep some words sometimes and a lot sometimes because we just think it's worth it. Uh, but it's not a problem we actually encounter with that many shows. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Jakai. Um, and first, I would like to say I'm a huge Toonami fan. Uh, I even have uh, the Absolution as my nickname on NeoGAF. So shout out to anybody on that. Um, and my first question is. Um, What's your second question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, okay, my second question is, uh, will S uh, Space Dandy's full OP be returning uh, when that when it comes hits back? back? Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it should be, yeah. Um, and my first question... <laughs> shoot. It really did happen in your mind. I had it like... Okay. Uh, um, I can't remember. Oh, Sorry. All right. Oh, wait, wait, now I just remembered, I remembered. Okay. <laughs> you did leave the oven on. You need to go ahead and turn it off. Um, like, what's the work schedule, like, workflow for you guys? Oh. Like, on, like, I know it's like, you guys have to divide your time between Adult Swim and yeah. Tanami. Yeah. Is it like 70, 30? Is it like, do you guys do it all the time? Do you start on Monday and like, just, <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, that's a very good question. Um, the re the, we work on Toonami in between our normal Adult Swim work. Uh, we're not paid for Toonami, what he's referencing. Um, and for Gil and I, it's pretty much we work on Toonami at all times. So we're usually, one of us is messing with the Tumblr, we're watching TV at night, we're watching Hannibal, texting each other about Toonami stuff. <laughs> Did you, Did, you see see this? This? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see this? Did you see that? We come in Monday, we meet about it, we talk about what we're doing the next couple weeks. We have a calendar that we that we reference, that we stick to very closely about what's coming up the next several weeks in terms of what work do we need to do. And then as far as the team, they work on it whenever they can in between all their other stuff. I mean, how do you guys look at it? 70, 30 sound about right? Yeah, it's, it's probably, honestly, closer to 50-50 most of the time. I mean, editorially, they, I'll let them answer that. And then, but Daniel will help write the opens, and Dave Campbell, who's running around here somewhere, uh, is writing opens and packaging and stuff, so. Shout out Dave. Dave, where are you? Raise your hand. Dave's waving the back, giving out t-shirts. He's in the dark. Free t-shirts. New guy. Um, Hi, Dad. So Hi, Dad. Uh, yeah. Thank you, yeah. So, and then um, Chris Hartley, who is just coming back from vacation, she sort of runs everything in terms of like scheduling and making sure we're actually doing what we're supposed to be doing and like, hey, dummy, you have to write this script, we're airing it on Saturday and it's Friday afternoon kind of thing. Um, we plan the longer pieces that we do each week out a little further in advance, ideally, um, and then the packaging is, we'll read a couple of weeks worth of open 
things with Steve at a time and try and stay ahead of them, and sometimes we do a better job than others of staying ahead of them. I'd say, what'd you say? I'd say 60-40 uh, is a good one. 60% tsunami or 40% tsunami? 40% tsunami. For me. Say this before I ask my question. Thank you so so much for showing this kid an, for a block that came from four to seven, who met a chick named Serena, who started out from a weakling and became a warrior. And I thank you for that because you showed me a kid from a country town did not know what anime was, that there are different worlds out there. There are there are stories that can be connected better than American series now. And I say thank you for that. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Thank you. My question is, and I'm okay, I'm a big fan of Intruder, Lockdown, yes. Absolution, yes. Um, Trapped in Hyperspace. When are we gonna get another total immersion event? Well, uh, funny you should ask. We Intruder 2, the sequel to Intruder, Woo! will be airing next year. Sure. Because Tsunami has risen like, and I can say this now, like a goddamn phoenix <laughs> from ashes, I, I would ask, can we see a battle between every version of Tom ever created? <laughs> yeah. 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 Even Moltar, even Moltar. Hello there. Hello. Uh, I have two questions. One is Toonami related, actually. Um, my first question is, is why is Toonami on only Saturdays and not every day? Uh, well, that's a good question. I, I mean, really, I think Saturday nights on Adult Swim was just anime for a number of years, and that's really down to Mike Lazo and Kim Manning, because they just felt like they always wanted Saturday night to feel different from the rest of Adult Swim, but the rest of Adult Swim ratings-wise does a lot better than Toonami. Toonami ratings-wise does amazing for Saturday nights. Like we're, we're, we're actually doing very well, if anybody's worried about that, we're doing great. We're kicking a lot of butt on Saturday nights, but we're not sure we would be kicking more butt than Family Guy would, you know what I mean? So it's, it's a, it's <laughs> maybe. Maybe. So, so we agree with you, obviously, you're, you know, you're preaching to the choir, we're not going <laughs> to or Tsunami, no, you know. <laughs> but, but we have this space that we've been given and we're just trying to maximize what we can do with that space and slowly expand it if we can. Um, but you know, I don't know that, uh, I don't know if it could, you know, support more than one night a week and you know, that would do better than what Adult Swim does. Yeah, I think if we expanded, it would be longer on Saturdays, not more days, 
But even longer on Saturdays would be pretty tough to do. We have yeah. pretty long attacks. 20 hours straight. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, my second question is, is that have you guys ever heard of the series called Danganronpa? And if you have, what are your thoughts Say on it? Say it again. I'm sorry. I mean, okay. My second question is, have you guys ever seen uh, the gaming or anime series called Danganronpa? And if you have, what are your thoughts on it? I haven't. I don't think I have. Okay. Got it. Noted. You should watch it. Got it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Hey. Hi. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask you guys, what was your first like personal reaction when you found out that Tanami would be working with Space Dandy? Oh, um, shock. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, that that came about mostly because of, of uh, our friendship with a guy named Kenny Adomi, who works for Bandai. Um, he he has been friends with us since way back in the Gundam Wing days. Um, so, yeah, our, our good relationship with Bandai began with Ken Yanomi, and so Ken came to us and, and said, I, I have, well, he, he has a very funny way of talking, but he came to us and said, I have a show for you, uh, and showed us basically the, the, the pitch file for Space Dandy, and once we saw one picture of Dandy and who was on the show, we said, oh, great, yes, what next, you know? So then, just, I didn't believe it was going to happen. I never believe anything good is going to happen until it happens, because I can't, I didn't want to hope. Um, but then when we heard it happen, I, I just, you know, I couldn't believe, you're going to let us premiere it worldwide? Okay, cool. I mean, yes, of course you should, you know. <laughs> I was like, yeah! Um, no, yeah, of course, thank you. That was my reaction. Um, I mean, uh, total amazement and joy. And uh, I mean, I had no idea that we would be premiering it let alone even have it that close. And uh, Funimation did a great job turning around the translations in time for us to be able to that was get it on. That was a big part of it. I didn't, all the way up until we got the episode, I didn't believe it was gonna happen. Like, no, we're not gonna world premiere it. No, come on. So, yeah, uh, constant disbelief. That's pretty much the answer to any how do you feel about <laughs> Toonami question. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank I don't know if you can answer this. I've got a couple questions no, like no, everybody no. else, but I don't know if you can answer this. Was the April Fool's thing a beta for bringing back Toonami? Was it to test, to try to test the waters? Was it? <laughs> what, what did you guys know when that happened? That, it was actually Mike Lazo and Kim Manning who said, you know, it'd be cool. We, we're, we're thinking about doing a time warp Toonami where all of a sudden you change the channel and it's like you're back in 1998 or you know, yeah. early 2000s and uh, they said can we get all your old packaging and stuff and we'd love your help putting it together so the first conversation Gil and I had was well, we got to make some new stuff like we got to do something new and we need to sort of take control of it because we always do tsunami um, and then we did on the slide kind of go if we do this right we can bring this shit back <laughs> <laughs> we did, we did, Coworkers were like, oh yeah, it's one night, yeah, whatever. Uh, but it was always kind of something we hoped for. You know, if you're in television, uh, and any of these guys can attest to that, when you work in TV, you get used to not everything's gonna work. You don't always win. Sometimes you just do what you're doing and enjoy it in the moment, and then it's gone, and that's okay, and you move on to the next thing, you know? So, um, but that's about right, right? Yeah, I mean, I think from a network perspective, it wasn't a beta test, but from Hours, that was certainly our hope. From a network perspective, it was just, let's do and something we, fun and cool. We just sort of said it would be easier if we just did it all. <laughs> <laughs> Which, in a way, it was, but not entirely. Um, and then along with that, what did you guys do over the course of time where Toonami didn't exist? Where were you guys? And what exactly are... Huh? Drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and Homeless. Thank for change. <laughs> what exactly are ratings and how can we make those better? Is it just how many people are watching at the given hour? Yeah. Tell I mean, a friend. Yeah. It, like, have them tell two friends. Ratings are, ratings are basically people watching TV at any given time. It's, 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 
It's actually Nielsen homes, so people that have a Nielsen box in their home, uh, Nielsen reports what they're watching or what they're DVRing, uh, what they're streaming, you know, everything. And basically, those homes are demographically representative of a certain group of people, whoever that might be, and then they work against the U.S. population and extrapolate. Well, if this many of this type of person that we reported are watching, then that means this larger number. So really the best thing you can do is tell people to watch and watch it, or DVR it and watch it later. Are you oh. friends with somebody with a Nielsen box? That's yes. actually the best way. Go over to their house and <laughs> leave it on. <laughs> That's, that's what I've always tried to do. Is every I don't know if I have a Nielsen box, but I heard Toonami's coming on, and even if I don't watch it, I'd make sure I change my channel, just leave that's Toonami right. on. Every little bit, every little bit, every streaming, every, everything you watch, every way you watch Toonami matters. So, thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. DeMarco, editorial staff, Dana. Uh, since Toonami's resurrection, uh, it's always been in the Saturday Day block in the late night, early morning uh, time slots. Now, my question, or rather, a uh, compound question would be, uh, do you think time slots affect the ratings of certain shows? And, quite possibly, would Toonami actually go back to its regular late afternoon, early evening time slots? Uh, time slots, of course they affect, you know, when people watch shows, for sure. Um, and as far as the second part of your question, uh, Toonami will never go back to the early afternoon, I don't think. It's an Adult Swim thing now, and it won't be a Cartoon Network thing, as far as I can see, uh, anytime soon. I mean, again, we've gone through so much stuff with Toonami, I would never say never, because who knows what's going to happen. Right, I, right. You know, <laughs> you know, somebody could call me tomorrow and say, put Toonami in the afternoon. Okay, you got it, you know. But I don't, if you're asking my opinion, I don't see it happening anymore. Hi guys. Hi. Hello, Hello. Jackie. Thank you. I love my GPS. I know, that is a nice jacket. He's wearing an IGPX jacket. Yeah. Well done. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, from past or present days of Toonami, what are some of your favorite tracks from the block? Music? Music. Oh, man. Oh my gosh. Uh, some of my favorite music from Toonami. That one that goes beep, boop, boop, beep. Yeah, that one. Um, I, you know, for me it's more favorite artists, so I love a lot of the Danger Mouse era that we had. Um, there, there are some guys called the P Brothers who we worked with pretty extensively, not as much now. Um, they have a couple tracks I just love. Um, and uh, right now, LP, I mean, you know, I'm blessed to, uh, we're blessed to know LP and he gives us lots of music. And we, we use the absolute crap out of it. Um, <laughs> we, we love it. Um, I don't, you know, the editors would probably really have some favorites. What's your favorite? I love Almond Tobin. I'm really glad that we have to practice. I use that, I use him a lot. Yeah, Almond Tobin is somebody that we were bummed when we lost the Ninja Tune rights and we recently got them back. So, <laughs> yeah, so you'll be hearing more Almond Tobin again where he belongs. Yeah! And then my. Uh, my second question, who was the one that did the promo last week for DBC Cooler's Revenge? Uh, I cut it. Woo! I wrote it. These guys. I, lo I loved it. It was a good promo. It, it was good? good? Great. Yeah, we used an old music track in that. I think that was a Ryan Burton track. Yeah, it was. Uh, Hammer Burton. Burton. Yeah. And then thank you guys for putting me uh, on the last Q&A, on-air Q&A Tumblr. I was the one that uh, I was the one that asked uh, what shows were we losing for daylight savings. Gotcha. So thank you guys. And daylight savings is always a tricky one. Sometimes we get shows and sometimes we lose them, and that's the yeah. cosmic way of you know, time travel. <laughs> hey, uh, my name is Rocka Guy, and um, I. I know you're probably gonna say no, but I just want to plant yeah. the seed of thought in your heads. There is a show that just has a special place in my childhood and my heart, and it is extremely underrated, and I've always felt like it would just be a perfect tsunami show, but it just wasn't given the chance I think it deserves. It was on JetX a few years ago. It's called Oban Star Racers. 
thought you were going to say a guitar. <laughs> You, you hear the cheers. The show has amazing art, an amazing story, and it's got an insane uh, cult following. And I just want you guys to think about it. Is there any chance that that show could ever end up on Toonami? I mean, there's always a chance. Because the people who made it, Save the World, they made that show and then just disappeared off the face of the earth. So I don't imagine you guys would have much trouble getting the rights to get that on, the, uh, on Toonami. But... I just want to get that in your heads. And anyone in this audience who hasn't seen the show, look it up. Uh, oh, I have another question. When are we going to get a second Toonami OST? Uh, well, probably never. Uh, <laughs> Nobody bought the first one. The, 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 well, no, oh, he did. <laughs> very, very good. The first, the first Toonami soundtrack we made well, lost a lot of money. So, uh, yeah, and no one buys records anymore now. So do it I digital. I don't think they'll let us do any more of those. More mixtapes, maybe. <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you guys for bringing Tsunami back. Thank you. My name is Dakota, and I've been an addict to Tsunami for 16 years. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for watching. <laughs> but uh, my question was, with the announcement of the Kill a Kill dub, would it ever make it on Tsunami? Kill a Kill is I mean, uh, we're looking at Kill a Kill. I really, yeah. I really like the show. They do give the real name. So yeah, the, the nudity might yeah. be a problem. So we're just we're looking at it. I don't I don't know. And I'm pretty sure you'd say no, but uh, yeah, would you ever be able to do a sub over dub? Say that again. Would you ever be able to do a sub show instead of dub? We dubs? would never be able to show a sub. We see every other answer to sub or sub. Yeah, we unfortunately look personally. We I will watch subs. I like subs. I like dubs too. Some shows I prefer subs. Some for dub, it depends on who did a better job on the show. But America, who watches TV, when they see subtitles, the channel gets changed instantly. That is a known fact. Um, so unfortunately, until America feels differently than you and I do, you're not gonna see, you're not gonna see that. Thank you. Yeah, no one wants to read it midnight. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for coming to the panel. We appreciate everything that you've done over the years and we really do love that you've come today. Um, we love that you're here today. Thank you. She's sweet, isn't she, guys? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> um, couple questions. The first question, we've seen Toonami rise fall. We know it's a really slow growth. What would you like to see in the next couple years if things go the way you kind of want it to? What would you like to see Toonami kind of grow? How would, what direction? And that goes to anybody. Gil? I mean, like Gil, the hard questions. Gil? Honestly, I, I think we're really happy with the way it's growing now. I don't think there's, I don't think there's anything, we, we obviously more money and more people watching, but in terms of like structurally what we would do differently, I don't, I mean, I think we're, we got what, seven premieres a night and we're on for some period of time in the next six and a half hours. Um, so that's, uh, I mean, I think that growth-wise, we just keep going that way, <laughs> not that way. And then, you know, one, one of the things I was hoping to do was Intruder or something like it, and we're going to be able to do that, thankfully. So um, we're doing what we want to do. We just want to keep it going. <laughs> we like that. We like that. Second question kind of goes to the editors a little bit because it got brought up by my friend in the IGPX shirt. Music is a big thing. I personally love it. Everybody does. But, you know, Toonami's just had a very its own special blend of music. How do you guys, even though you have such a large collection, say, you know what? This is what I'm feeling. This is what I really, really want to put into this promo or into this AMV. Because personally for me, Dreams, the Dreams yes. promo was really good. It so was good. beautiful. So how do you say, you know what? I like this. You like this? You know, what's that thought process? We've got so many tracks, like Jason's the guy that gets us all the music from War, or Ninja Tune, or whoever, or uh, you know, Brian Burton, or whatever. Um, we've got so many, but I don't know, I feel like we've gone, we just comb over it all the time, and sometimes we'll spend a day just trying to find a music track, you know? Because the music is so uh, important to the feel and the emotion of the thing, you know? So it's a big, big part of it. And 
will spend a good amount of time trying to find the right track, and it just takes time. You know? yeah. But when you hit it, you know, it, you know it feels right. Dana, I see you nodding your head. She's like, yeah. Random thought, you should release your own, like, hey, these are like my top 10 tracks that, you know, I like for each of you. That would be kind of cool. Jason, please, show me that sleeve. I really want to take a full look. I've been seeing it, like, on the camera, and I really want to yeah. see. Can I get a close-up of that? That is pretty nice. That is pretty nice. Um, hello, my name's Travis. I've been a fan ever since I was, like, little. Uh, what, I think I know the first answer to this question. Um, I went to a Funimation panel. They were showing a fairy tale trailer and I basically said, only on Toonami. So is there any chance that we could see fairy tale or no? Uh, we're not right now. No, I mean, you know, we don't have any current plans. Fairy tale is a show that we like, um, but we don't have anything to announce at the moment about fairy tale. Okay. Um, my second question, I was going to ask if Steve Bloom could give me a hug, but can I have the voice of Sarah give me a hug, please? Do you know my name? Uh, Dana. Da Is this good enough? Yeah, Dana. <laughs> yep. Yeah! Um, I got three questions. <laughs> three questions. One, when is season two, like, are you going to have season two English dub out for Toonami? If, if uh, season one continues to do as well as it's doing, okay. then I don't foresee why we wouldn't want to air season two. Okay. Could I get a, this is embarrassing, can I get a selfie with you? A selfie with, a selfie. with me? Yay. Yeah, sure. Yo, one, can you hang out right there and we'll do it after? We're going to wrap this up in like ten minutes. Is that okay? That's why oh. we have that chair there. Yeah, that chair, <laughs> that chair is for songs. No one else used to like that. Um, I wanted to know if there was any possibility of having Death Note on Toonami. Death Note. <laughs> I want to know this because I love that show. A lot of Death Note fans. Uh, possibility? Yes. Direct plans happening soon? No. Okay. <laughs> you can all wait there. It's fine. <laughs> Selfie group. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm the one that fell. <laughs> um, I grew up on Adult Swim. Well, what in the world? Whoa. Whoa. Well, in a way, because I started watching Kakaider and Inuyasha when I first got into the Adult Swim thing. And I know that y'all have lost the license to Inuyasha, mm -hmm. um, yeah. which is unfortunate. It's one of my favorite shows. Right. Um, no argument here. Yeah, um, do you think that losing the license to Inuyasha was a good thing because now you have these, like Attack on Titan, I love Attack on Titan. Yeah, yeah. Is it a, do you think it's a good thing that y'all don't have the license now to the older shows, that way you can bring us the new stuff? Um, it's, well, it's not a, it's not a one-to-one -one thing. I mean, older shows are usually a lot cheaper than newer shows anyway, but not always, because it's different for and every company. And speaking of the premiere of Attack on Titan, why the heck did y'all did not play the whole OP for the uh, show? Yeah, that, that wasn't actually us. We actually, there was program that Human was, error and yeah. where, uh, the human error. Yeah, because I was sitting there like, okay, this is the whole of the uh, minute or so opening. I'm like, what in the world? It's like 30 seconds. It's the beginning and the end, though. It's just the middle part, wasn't it? Yeah, that's, and then all of a sudden the ending is not the wholly there. Well, like we said, that wasn't something we But you did get to see the show. Yes, and thank you. Okay, I have two questions really quick. First one, I asked last con, um, and there's a reason I'm asking. Any chance of an action figure of Tom? Uh, 
Oh man, I would, wouldn't you guys love to see an action figure of Tom? I would yes. Uh, yes. Not anytime soon. I know. I, I know. I would, I would dearly love to do that. Um, anytime I see you guys, I'm gonna ask that. Um, yeah. So find a friend with a Nielsen box and get our ratings up. But actually, at the end of this panel, if any of you guys who have a raffle ticket, the thing that we're raffling off is actually, hold on, let me, let me get it, I'll show yes. you what we are raffling. I knew it! We're having a raffle? Ultra, ultra rare. Now is the time. eBay gold. Sorry, we lost it. If you put it on eBay, we will find you. I know. I know. Yeah! Yes, he is. I, I've been waiting to see that this is all a night. a 3D printed Tom uh, based off the model. I saw it on Tumblr. Oh, God. So uh, there's only one of the, there's one other one, which is in my office. Yeah. You guys can't have it. But this one, uh, at the end of this Q&A, we're going to show a little something, and then we're going to call out the raffle ticket, and whoever wins gets that. Yeah. So that's as close as it gets now. That one was mine. I know. So, I'm yeah, so now this was Gil's. He's actually going to give it to you guys. Thank you very much, Gil. He's a hero. Yeah. Okay. I'm a selfish bastard, I'm keeping mine. Speaking of selfish. Sorry. Speaking of selfish bastards, my yes. second question. I got this poster from you guys last convention. It is Tom 2, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I have Steve Blum's hard to read signature on there. Sure. I would very much appreciate if the rest of the April 1st crew and, well, the rest of you, uh, Signed it after the after Absolutely. the Absolutely, we will be doing signings after the panel downstairs. All right. Um, we'll give you more information about where exactly downstairs is when the panel's <laughs> wrapped up. But yeah, we'll be we'll sign things for whoever wants them just for a little bit. Thank you. Cool. What? Crystal ballroom. Ooh, the crystal ballroom. How is this? Like ballroom? Come to the crystal ballroom and we'll sign your shit. <laughs> thank you very much, and okay. thank you for See the. You down there. And I think we have time for about maybe one more yeah, question. Yeah, maybe last count, question. Buddy. Sorry. So, it's all on you, man. What's the final no question? Um, there yeah. are two questions. Uh, okay, I have one question. Um, uh, have you gotten any requests from viewers to show um, like a early Transformer series like Armada, Energon, or Cybertron? Uh, believe, believe it or not, believe it or not, we have not gotten a lot of requests to show Transformer shows, but also. Now that Hasbro has their own channel, um, you know, the possibility of us showing stuff from Hasbro in general is, is very slim. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. I think that's got to wrap it up. Right. Yeah. We, we would love to keep having you guys ask questions, but we want to, we, we were told we got to get out of here at 8 and we want to show you something. It, 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 this is would you like one. to see something? Yeah. It's a special video. Yes. Yeah. So let's, can we kill the lights and show the other video that we have? Sorry to everybody who didn't get their question. There's always time left. What? That's impossible! Sarah, prep the ship for hyperspace. Come in, Tom. We had a breach.
everybody with a raffle ticket. I'm gonna call this out. If you are the winner, yell out, okay? So, five, three, two, one, zero, one. We have a winner! Come on, buddy. Maybe, let's check it out. Let's see if it's legit. Come, Come on, on down! A new All right. car. I don't know if there are any left, but in the back there are shirts, one per person. And they're free! And if you Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. When we go downstairs signing, we're going to sign this shirt for charity. You want to make you want to just say what it is? I'm sorry. Jessica, I'm gonna have to get down. Jessica, come here. Will you come over here? And then I'll do, we'll do soccer team. Right there, right there, right there. Say cheese. Um, oh, oh. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you to pick anyone at Barnes & Noble. Okay. I'm gonna be good to sign this. You want me to sign this? Yeah. Oh. I just have, uh, oh, it's not a, it's oh. filming. No, it's filming. Yeah. Okay. We'll still be still. <laughs> Hello. How is it going to not be Facebook podcast? It's the three of us. People named Sarah sometimes and a fan. Is your name Sarah? Yes. Is it? Three Sarah. Hey, y'all. Deal with it. Okay. Do you think it's pictures of people taking pictures? Got it. Yeah, I'm a better one. Great. Yay! <laughs>